All right, so now I am in vector.com. It's very, it's in kind of one of their basic templates. All I have is my image that I brought in and that image I took down to lower than 50%. And now on top of that, I am going to use the pencil tool, which is basically within vector, a free form pen tool. And I'm just going to trace around like digitally inking my text and then once I have that freehand path I want to make sure I fill it with black and that I turn off any border and then I do that for each letter it's just like digitally inking your letters. This makes them a vector, and then you can save them. This is a pain in this freeware, but you can save them as an SVG file and then move those into PhotoP as a vector file, which, of course, you can then scale at any size. You can also tweak them because once they are a path, you can select them and you can modify them as a vector and kind of clean them up even more. My problem with this is there is no way to kind of smooth them out easily without using the pen tool. So when I use the pen tool and you double click on it, do you see how many anchor points <laughs> that their, their pencil tool, their free, their free hand path creates? It's a little ridiculous and there isn't any way I know of in which you can make it like simplify it like you use the smooth tool in PhotoP. So if I was doing this all with freeware, even though it's ideal to make your, te your type a vector like you did with your logo, instead of using vector.com, I would use PhotoP at full resolution. So I'm gonna open PhotoP back up And I'm going to open the last file I saved with it, which is here. And this time, I'm going to digitally ink or digitally trace my type right in PhotoP at full resolution. So you, now I'm going to change my image size. I was at 16 by 20 at 72, then at 144. I'm going to change that up all the way to 350, our finished poster size. Now, when I do that, my spot illustration is a smart object still. So that's going to scale up perfectly to whatever my original resolution of it was, right? But my text is going to maybe soften even more, especially where it was a screen grab. So it gets so bumpy and crazy here. So now what I do is I take my type. This is why I kind of simplified it. I'm going to turn off my blocking sketch. Don't need that anymore. I'm going to turn off really everything except the upper type and the lower type. Don't need that. And I can even merge all these together. Not sure what that one is. Especially because we're working at full resolution, you don't want to have more layers than you need, right? So I'm also going to get rid of, at this point, all of my text blocking. Okay, now I take the upper type and I take its opacity down to 50%. I onion skin it. And instead of doing what I was doing with the freehand pencil tool in vector.com, I'm going to use my brush, just like when we did digital inking for our line art in the last assignment. I'm going to use it at 100% or 100% hardness, 100% opacity. I'm going to make it pressure sensitive and I'm going to turn on smoothing. Okay. 
but I want to do it on a new layer <laughs> and lock the layer underneath. Come on. Now, the key is in using freeware is to only use them at full scale in these kind of finishing techniques. So I might have a little too much smoothing turned on, but we'll see. So this is just like using that freehand path tool in vector.com, except it is a raster at full resolution that I'm creating. Now I can use my paint bucket brings all these skills together, and I can fill it, like so. And then if I really want to be clean about it, instead of trying to fill this, which will stair-step the edges, I'm going to use my brush and go around and clean those shapes. OK, so that's how I would do this without having to pay for anything to get full, high resolution, clean type. Let me just do it with the S. And it would probably take me about two or three minutes to clean it up for all of them. Make this a little bit smaller. Not that small for each letter. So we're talking, it's going to take about an hour to, to, to do that all with my design. And that's a lot to just get a solid black shape. So what's the faster approach? We need to use Adobe Illustrator. We need to use a program we pay for, like I showed you with, with your line art, if we wanted it to be a vector. So let me save this. I might as well finish off that S. Save it. And as I've already been helping a lot of you with, once you understand the different ways you can do it, there is the easiest way to do it, which is a feature in Adobe Illustrator called Image Trace, which we've looked at before, even though it's not freeware. And I'm trying to do all freeware, but sometimes just to save time, once you understand the skills involved, it's OK to use it. So remember that I not only saved this screen grab, but I also saved a JPEG of the uh, just the text in black, right? So the problem with it is this is all based on the screen grab. It's incredibly soft. But if I open this up in Adobe Illustrator, which you have access to in the lab, it can take that raster file. Here we see it. And if we select it with our large selection tool, under properties, we get image trace as an option. And if we use black and white logo settings, we can get these this uh, image trace panel either from here or from window under image trace. Once we're here, we want to click down on the drop down arrow by advanced and say ignore the white. And when you see that, all this white's going to go away on the outside of the artboard because it's not going to trace the white shapes anymore. It's only going to trace the black shapes. Then I want to zoom in. And even though the JPEG file I gave it was incredibly soft, this traces it very cleanly. And I have control of that with these settings. So if I want it a little bit thinner, I can lessen the threshold. If I want it to be a little bit smoother, I can lower the number of paths. 
and it's previewing it for me as I go. There is no such thing as a perfect image trace. I don't like that little arrow right there. But it saves you a lot of time. I don't like how thin it is there. I don't like that little stair step that happens there. But these are things or there. But these are things I can fix. So once it's close, I click expand. But make sure that ignore white is checked. And when I hit expand, now it is a vector. I can use the small selection tool. Here we go. And I can fix some of these issues. And the tool I like best for that, and I went over this when we talked about digital linking for your spot illustrations, is the pencil tool. Especially because you can set this, like your brush in Photopea, to be more smooth. And I just have to see the anchor points in order to use the pencil tool. But once I can see the anchor points, I can redraw. So I'm going to use command to use the small selection tool to see the anchor points. And then I'm just going to redraw some of these edges. And I can even change my typeface. Like if I want that S to have a little bit fuller tail, I can do that. Then I can smooth it out. These are all options within digital art. Just like for our logos, just like for our digital linking. If I want to thicken up the in here, I can do that. And I can also do this by just painting it at full resolution in Photop. This just is a little bit cleaner, a little bit faster. Image tracing, vectorizing. And once it's a vector, we know that it will scale up beautifully within our photo P program. Ah, that one. So I'm checking all these edges. I'm smoothing them out. Does not need to be perfect. But you need to understand what these different attributes are. I can also use the smooth tool. So is Illustrator a better tool, you know, a more versatile tool than Vector.com? Yes, it is. But you have to pay for it, unless you're in the class. All right, so now that's finished off. I've finished my black type. I need to then save it as a vector format that can go into Photop. And there's a few different ones I can use. But the one I like best is called EPS. And that's only one from Illustrator. I'm going to, just going to do it to the, to the desktop. And I'm going to call it my black vector type. The other way I can save it is the type that you can actually open in vector.com. So it's another portable vector format, and it's called SVG. But for an SVG to, to work, you need to make sure that your whole image fits on the artboard, the white space within Illustrator, before you save it. So file, save as, onto my computer, an SVG. And so now I have an EPS and an SVG saved onto my desktop, and I can close Illustrator. And I can go back to my photo P, get from my desktop either one of these. I'll show you how they both work. The black vector EPS. I can put it in, hold down Option. Yeah, this is a new new issue within uh, Photopea. This is an issue I've never had, where EPS files are working like SVG files.